Welcome. In this video, we're going to show you how to create a Wirecast custom live broadcast in YouTube. Now, what you want to do is you'll treat everything the same up until when you create your new event. So we're going to go ahead and click new live event. I could also click schedule a new event. We want to change it from quick to custom. And you want to make sure you are on custom because that's the only time you get to use those other encoding options. Google Hangouts on Air is our encoder. Well, we can have other applications or hardware be our encoder. So uh, the title is going to be uh, Wirecast YouTube Live Setup. And we're going to add in those keywords and we're going to call this a simple startup with Wirecast. All right. Now, you'll notice that now is not an option. You have to choose uh, a date and an actual time. Well, uh, it defaults to the next hour, so here we are at 1.47 p.m., so it's switching to 2 o'clock. Well, if I just tell it to go to 1.30, then it'll start immediately or as soon as I can do it. Now, I'm putting this as private. Once again, you can change that to public. Uh, your advanced settings stay the same as well and I'm going to go ahead and create the event. Now, because I chose custom, we're going to see this uh, big Wirecast for YouTube live streaming production software. So when you click, you'll go to uh, try it now to download if you haven't downloaded it. And you can see that Wirecast is offering a lot of different ones here. We have um, Play, which is a free, allows you to do basic switching, transitions, picture in picture, which is pretty cool and support for black magic capture cards. Uh, the studio is more expensive, gives you uh, multiple sources, composites, titles, green screens, um, preview and shot editor, full capture card support in X264. And the Pro has even more things. The big thing on Pro is scoreboards. Scoreboards are really cool and they're a neat feature. I'm gonna go with the uh, regular play version, which is what I have right now and we'll go and open that up because I've already downloaded it. Now what I'm going to do is go ahead and jump over to start and I'm going to open up my um, Wirecast encoder and Wirecast is opening up. It's popping up on my other screen so you don't see it right now but uh, it is coming up and when it opens up, it usually asks you, uh, do you want to use the tutorial? I'm going to say uh, continue. No, I'm not going to run the tutorial right now. And I'll go ahead and bring that window over and I will shrink it down. So uh, one thing I want you to do is go ahead and make sure my uh, stream settings are correct. So let's go back over to the YouTube. I'm going to say custom in ingestion and I'm going to Go ahead and do Wirecast 720p. Uh, now it says the event has successfully been saved and it gives you this, this information. We could also do Wirecast for YouTube and see now it's going to do Wirecast and actually tells you how to download and install, log in, all that stuff. So what I'm going to do is go ahead and do that. I'm going to jump over to uh, my Wirecast and I'm going to go to Output and Output Settings. And what we want to do is go ahead and authenticate. And this um, is going to ask me to sign in using the YouTube browser. All right. So now it's jumping over here. I'm going to tell it to use um, this one here and digital media and say accept. And so now it means that this Wirecast is going to be set up to control my uh, YouTube account. And so now it'll find the event and if you had multiple events, it, here it is, it's, it's set up. Um, and we're going to, um, it's already set up to do it YouTube 720p, um, ready to go. It's also going to record to disk and we're going to set that up as well. And you can see that it also has the location for the RTMP upload. And these things are very important for other applications that you might want to use uh, for broadcasting. You have to know the server 
and the stream. And that's what these two things are. These are also listed under the settings inside. Let's go ahead and um, check in here and all right, so you can check out some of these settings up here. There are a whole lot. Um, the main thing is you can see that um, right now there's nothing coming out. So if you look live broadcast area, there's nothing showing. And we have some layers. Uh, in the free version, there's uh, not a lot more you can do. Uh, you can switch to, hey, here's the camera. So this is showing me here in the classroom. And then there is um, the ability to add a, a different camera or add a desktop. I'm going to add a desktop and I'm going to tell it to be a new local desktop presenter. Uh, that pops up a window here and that window is you can rename the local desktop. I'm going to rename, we call it um, Monitor um, 2 and we're going to tell it to do um, you can actually select the window and so when you click select window you can tell it to do monitor 0 or monitor 1 and you see now monitor 1 is over here on the left that's the one I'm in whereas monitor 0 is the one over on the right screen you can also tell it to just do a window if you want and so I'm going to select the window now and I'm going to tell it to do Photoshop and I'm going to click OK and so now it's doing um, Photoshop. I think I like uh, doing it just as a monitor but I did want you to notice there was a game option in there as well. I'm going to tell it to go ahead and select that. You can tell it to get some audio as well. You can tell it to record audio from uh, one of these things. I'm going to tell it to um, to not actually record any audio because I'm recording over here anyway. Uh, you'll see any system devices if you have other microphones, um, other USB cameras, um, it'll be right over here. So we're going to go ahead and uh, click X and now we have created that other shot. And You're like, well, where is it? Why don't we see it anymore? Well, it's not up here because we still have to go down to the bottom and add it. So we're going to click on here and now I'll see add monitor to shot. And so now I can switch between uh, my camera and my monitor. And when I do that, it switches smoothly over to my monitor where I might do a lesson. So I could then work on here and create my adjustments to this picture and we'll just play with this a little bit. Um, everything's dark in the figures, so we'll go over to the, mix, the um, adjustment brush and use the adjustment brush to increase the brightness in a particular region. We'll make sure that the auto mask is turned on and we'll brighten up our figures. And you can kind of see how that works. It's not too hard to do. Very easy to knock that out. Um, as long as your cursor doesn't go outside the edge, the auto mask will keep it from lightening things we don't want lit up. And we're just knocking this out. You'll have to apologize that I do this rather quickly um, and don't do a super quick job on it or a super good job. But I want you to understand that's how that goes. It's not that hard. Next, um, we'll switch back to the camera and there we go we're back to showing me again now that is a a set of features for the basic version the the free version of Wirecast uh, I believe you can do a picture-in-picture -picture. let's see if we can uh, change the template to a picture-in-picture -picture. so I'm gonna um, click on the little uh, settings icon in the bottom corner and I'm gonna do picture in picture lower right and so when you set this up we can do source A can be monitor 2 source B can be USB camera so you can have yourself in the video shot uh, you can also change the way that looks I'm gonna change this one here I'm gonna change the source um, our template here I'm gonna give it to let's do 
side, picture in picture, upper right. And I'm going to change the source A is going to be the monitor and source B is going to be the USB camera. And so let's switch to that mode and you'll see how you can show two different things at once. So this can be a, a, an easy way to create a video broadcast and of course you can add another version of that monitor shot so that when I switch back it goes back to that monitor shot. So this can actually make some pretty clean shots for a um, pre presentation or a YouTube uh, video. If you want to record your screen, this is a great way to do it. It allows you to do some simple things. Next, I want to show you how the actual streaming works. So we'll go ahead and start the stream. And we'll also start the recording. And so it's going to give me my information, my CPU usage, and our bandwidth. And um, that way it'll actually show whether or not we're on air. Now, once that happens, we can go back to we're streaming, but are we actually um, running with it? Well, let's go back to our YouTube channel and go to the live control room and let's see what's happening. Now, because I hit stream, it's going to tell me, hey, I have a stream status and it's saying the health is good. If it does not say stream is, status is good, it could mean that you're, um, you didn't log in properly, um, but you won't be able to bring up the um, stream and record options if that's the case. So um, the health is good. We're good to go on that. So we do a preview. Now, we're still not live yet. We're streaming, but we're not live yet. Uh, it's also telling me that this is not public, so we can't have in any live um, and video programming. And now it says you're preparing your live stream. When you wait a few moments, this can take 30 seconds um, to create your preview window. And we're just waiting for it. And now that it's there, you could take a preview here and see what it looks like. Now this will not be live live. It'll be pretty close to live. All right, so you can see that it's, it's back in time some. It's not exactly where I was. Um, you can then do start streaming, which actually puts it live. So in other words, you have to go to your encoder, set up your shots, and then go to start streaming. And are you sure you want to start streaming? Yes. And there we go. We are streaming live in just a moment here. And so now it's saying we are live. And what I'm going to do is go ahead and minimize this, come back to where we're working. So this is where you then introduce yourself, maybe have some music going. You can do that as well. Um, when you go to the plus, you can... Um, you can add in other documents. So if I go plus here, I can add in, um, just not hitting it right, let's see. I can tell it to open up a file and I can bring up other files, um, videos or otherwise, and actually send it out. Now remember, I want you to understand this is also recording to my computer, so it's a good way to just save. So you can use this to just save and do tutorials. You don't have to be streaming to do that. Um, and anyway, so it's a, it's a pretty pretty interesting way to um, create your broadcast using this software. Now, I'd like to get into the, some of the more advanced features in another video. So we're going to stop this one here. And to stop that broadcast, I'm going to bring back up here. And I'm going to say stop streaming. If I said stop streaming in the Wirecast app, it would give me a big warning saying, hey, we're not seeing any you know, footage coming through. You're not, we're not getting any data from your encoder. But I'm going to go ahead and just click the stop streaming here, and this will end it and kill that particular um, show. Now I can go back to the event manager, and there won't be any live events. If I choose completed, you'll see it here as one that's been completed. And 
All right, so now let's go ahead and um, we'll see if we can create a setup for the next one using some of the more advanced features of Wirecast.